we will be able to audit all of the smart contracts and ensure that they are correct. Um, I think like anything who, else. Who, who says they're correct? How do we know they're correct? Right. So this is where you get audited, right? Yeah, so the, uh, so two, two things. To answer your first question again, none of your personal health care data goes on the, on the chain. It's still, so let's just say for purposes of this discussion, all of your current health care data, if you have not seen one doctor for the last 20 years in the primary care position, it stays there. But if you, if uh, they start to submit claims via a smart contract on the blockchain, it would just be writing that a transaction took place and everyone agreed to verify and agree to the result of that transaction was written to the ledger. So it's it's like the smallest piece of information is actually written to the ledger on the blockchain. So it's not not your healthcare data. Um, that's important. So if your healthcare data is currently wrong with your healthcare provider, blockchain won't fix that. Nor will it make it worse. So that so that's that's the good good news. Um, the on the smart contracts, those are let, think of them as automating the business rules. So a insurance company may say, I'm going to automate the business rules for adjudicating a claim for what I, what has to be submitted in that claim for me to say I'm going to pay it. So that's a business uh, rule automation problem as opposed to a your data going on the blockchain problem. So it, it's, it, uh, our first best steps are saying, um, you know, can we automate some business rules so that parties can transact directly rather than going to a central clearing party like they do today? Or can we can we just say that yes, this pill got manufactured here, and every place that it goes until it gets in your mouth is timestamped. It's verified and it's timestamped, and there's a record of it. So if you have problems for that that drug, that pill. So those are the kind of use cases that are being implemented. So it's, it's a ledger like any other. So I hope that, I don't know if that helps. So but I can add one thing to that. So you can still make errors, right, in terms of pointer and things like that. You, so, yeah, and I think we should stop using pointer. Yeah, but, but I think what it comes <laughs> Let's down Let's talk about to, real world things, like pills. But, but, but what it comes down to is something called governance, right? Yes. Governance is in its early, early days. And you know, this DAO or decentralized autonomous organization is something that makes decisions about can you roll back records, can you hash records. GDPR is saying that we have the opportunity to delete records, right? You won't be able to do that necessarily in the blockchain, but maybe you can hash the records so that it becomes obfuscated, right? So there's going to be, in private chains, you have like a board of trustees, which is elected, and they make the decision and they do governance. In public chains, you get a DAO or a decentralized autonomous organization. They make the decision about what happens if errors are made. And if they decide that you can't do anything about them, that's why well, you're probably in the wrong chain. You're working with the wrong group. If you want to be in a chain that can you know, roll stuff back, go and work with a different chain, different provider. So, to simplify a little bit, it, it is garbage in, garbage out. But you can just be sure that your garbage didn't change while it was in the blockchain. <laughs> yeah, that's very. And, we and have if you're, your garbage can go on the yeah, you can go on the blockchain. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. Right, but that's correct. That doesn't change. That's very apt. Last question. Thank you. Uh, my question is about consortiums, and I want to I want to know what you think about them and that will last. Or do you think it's a challenge to get people to get together on the same page? Because we are already hearing about some companies leaving consortiums, some get excited, and well, there's this whole recycling process going on. So I just want to hear about it. Well, I built one, so I'm qualified to comment on that. <laughs> They're very difficult. Um, think of it as uh, I think of blockchain healthcare as an opportunity for adversaries come around the table and decide what they will exchange uh, for minimum viable transactions that can make them all money. So, you, uh, so that's hospitals and insurance companies, that's banks, that's life insurance, that's the big tech companies like Apple. And you get them all in a room, and that's why I said the only thing that they could agree on was identity. 
Uh, so they are very difficult to form. Whether or not you want to start with a consortium, I think it is really, really uh, important design principles around blockchain to start with who is your network and why do they want to transact together and what will they transact if you stand it up. Because if, if, you're, if you're raising money and you, have a, if you don't even have a hypothesis about that yet, you really shouldn't. Shouldn't do it, but I think um, trying to start with even three, you know, three actors and getting them to transact is, is worth it. Right. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Thank you all.